Ja. Ja. Yes. ja, daar heb ik wel eens over nagedacht. Oh, nee, dan zou ik niet doen. Ik denk ook dat het ligt aan ieders budget of zo. Ja. Dus inderdaad wat jij zegt, omdat we nu student zijn en een klein budget hebben, denken we eerder aan, oké, okay, we pakken wel het goedkoopste, maar we eten minder vlees. Dus dan dragen we zo bij, zeg maar, het klimaat. Ja, yes. Yes, so would. 10% is fine. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. I think that just needs to be the default option, so nobody notices it's 10% extra. Het moet gewoon de default zijn, vind ik. Dat is een goed idee. Dan zou ik geen problemen mee hebben. Omdat het uh, ook wel goed voor de aarde is. En dan kunnen we met z'n allen wel gewoon een beetje de aarde verbeteren. Ja, dat is ook een punt. En dat, dat doen we al. Uh, ja, daar zou ik wel bereid te zijn. Het zou alleen jammer zijn dat dat moet. Dat het uh, 10% duurder moet zijn. Want het moet voor iedereen toegankelijk zijn. En daar is het dan duidelijk niet. Dat zou heel jammer zijn. Maar ik ben er wel bereid toe om het te betalen. Ja. Ja, afhankelijk of mijn pensioen uh, stijgt. Pollution, overpopulation and a huge amount of CO2. The earth is warming up and climate change is a reality. As the weather is getting more extreme, sea levels are rising, which causes regions to flood. Growing crops becomes more difficult and animal species are becoming extinct. The earth is special and we need to cherish it. What if we all contribute to do something about it, even if it's only a small thing? In this documentary series of three episodes, I would like to travel with you to the high-tech campus in Eindhoven, a place in the Netherlands that tries to make a difference in becoming the most sustainable campus in Europe. What initiatives are they taking and how are they going to be more green, vital, diverse and innovative as a campus? In the first and second episode of this series, we talked about being a green, vital and diverse campus. But there's one thing we still haven't talked about. The topic which makes this campus flourish. Innovation. How do you use innovation to make this place more sustainable? So Paul, where are we right now? We are at the AI Innovation Center here on campus. Uh, this is one of the, the big projects that we've set up as part of our 2030 strategy. Um, <clears throat> and the mission of this center is to industrialize AI in this region. And in order to achieve this, uh, we collaborated with uh, ASML, Signify, Philips and NXP uh, to help companies in this region start, start with applying AI. And why is this so important? 70% of the people working here on campus indicate AI as their key technology to apply in the next five to ten years. Um, so in order to remain competitive as a region and as a regional industry, it's very crucial to start adopting these technologies on top of the existing capabilities that we have in this region uh, with respect to hardware. And that's relatively new for this region. Exciting. It's very exciting and it's a new thing uh, which excites me personally uh, and I'm very happy that we joined forces with those four giants to make this uh, transformation as a region. And what is going to happen here? So what we created here is basically going to be the living room for the AI community in the region. We want to host events, for example, here, uh, education programs, but also want to develop an infrastructure and an ecosystem in order to make companies able to adopt AI and apply it in actual projects. So therefore, we have designed uh, and developed this, this facility. Um, and in this facility, we put really the community in the center. So we've thought of an operating model where we put people, AI enthusiasts in the center to basically set the agenda for what's happening here. The AI Innovation Center isn't the only innovative place on campus. There's a 5G hub, a cluster of photonics companies and a workplace vitality hub that focuses on vitality in the workplace. The campus is practically a living lab itself. Why are these environments necessary to create innovation? I think the COVID pandemic learned us that innovation, especially in R&D environments, uh, is, is, is very hard to do via a screen, right? So uh, you want to build a new product, a new service, a new application with each other. Connect face to face. Exactly. Uh, if we look each other in the eye, we can, we can collaborate way more effectively if we want to create a new product or service. 
so that's why also uh, the big companies here on campus, but also the smaller ones, indicate this, this kind of indicate that this kind of uh, creative environments are very important for them uh, to keep track with their new products and services. Imagine you have this great campus, you have 12,000 people working here, very smart people. You have over 200 companies, institutes, startups. There's a lot of potential to be developed here on campus. Let me give you one example how we want to use uh, this campus as a living lab. Uh, we're working on a project called Flying Forward, which is a drone project of the European Union. And in this project, we are going to develop the campus literally as a living lab to test with autonomous drones. So that's a, that's a really new uh, application area. And what we are researching there is how autonomous drones can be used in the city of the future. And there also comes in the sustainability part. How can you use uh, autonomous drones in order to increase sustainability in the city of the future? So this campus is a perfect test bed for a city. So we're basically a, a micro city um, with this one square kilometer and we can test here use cases and everything that all the challenges that come with these use cases in order to transfer them later to uh, the city. One of the use cases that we're exploring is to let a drone fly over the campus at night with a, a heat camera uh, de to detect uh, energy leakages in the buildings. So for example if a window is open a lot of energy is leaking out of the building uh, an operator can be sent to the to the window and close it. It seems like a very easy, uh, very straightforward use case actually, but you can do this with autonomous drones and therewith save a lot of energy, if you have a campus on this scale, of course. Next to being a living lab, the campus is also a breeding ground for new companies. A lot of them are created with the help of accelerators like Lumo Labs, ERT Digital and Hitech Excel, a deep tech venture builder that helps to build companies from scratch with technology from, for example, CERN, ESA, and TNO. Why is it so important to do this at the high tech campus and in this region, the Brainport region? I've been, I've, I'm born and raised here. Uh, my, my, my parents worked on this campus. and uh, Back then it was Philips, Philips only big uh, fences. Uh, the only uh, opportunity for me as a little kid to visit this place was to go ice skating on the lake. Um, I've been working uh, uh, in the high-tech industry all my life, uh, 10 years abroad. I've been visiting and working at uh, a lot of uh, high-tech innovation spots around the world. When I came back in 2010, I was really impressed with how the campus had evolved. Uh, I mean, 235 companies on just one square kilometer, over 12,000 researchers, 80 nationalities, all on one square kilometer. Yeah, it makes it pretty unique. It's actually a dream location if you want to build your new tech company because at literally five minutes walking distance you can have access to lab facilities, uh, find development partners, uh, supply chain partners, potential clients um, and that proximity is really unique and if you combine then that proximity, so literally the five minutes walking distance with having a virtual database of contacts so that you can pick up the phone, call people and bring that startup the next day in front of the right company and the right expertise. That is why it works without this ecosystem, this compass embedded in this Eindhoven Brainport region. Uh, that, that is actually the secret sauce. Without this, you can't do this kind of venture building. How important is the theme of sustainability for Hitech Excel and the startups? Good question, question close to my heart. Very important. Uh, we are a big believer that the grand challenges societies are facing these days can be fixed by taking advanced technologies, mix that up with entrepreneurship, build companies with a purpose. And that's what we do. So uh, concretely, we demand very early on in the program uh, to make a strong correlation between what the company is intending to do how that contributes to the SDGs defined by the United Nations. If they don't, if they can't articulate that, then that's fine, you can still build a company, but not in our program. So we only build companies with a strong purpose. One example is Carbion, technology resourced uh, from TNL, thin film, 
And um, the researcher discovered that that thin film material is very economically viable to capture CO2 directly from the air. Um, it's very advanced technology, very difficult to uh, build equipment. Uh, this, this company can do it. So we believe that if we install the size of one soccer field equipment of carbon, we can neutralize the complete annual CO2 emissions of the KLM. And I'm talking normalized, not during COVID. That would be too easy of a target. Now then realize that KLM in aviation is only contributing to 1%. So 100 soccer fields with equipment from Carbion could neutralize annual total CO2 emissions of the aviation industry. Wow, that's, that's huge. That's huge. That is a company with a purpose. And what you see happening then is that because of the impact, it's easier to find talented people. So very early on, they had very smart people joining the team. But also very early on, there were investors to put the money in the company because of the purpose it's pursuing. Um, so yeah, sustainability for us is part of the foundation. It is there from day one. Uh, but also, we do this with a, with a broader view on, uh, on sustainability. So, building fast-growing companies which address the grand challenges societies are facing, but do that here in the Eindhoven region to make sure that also in 10, 15 years from now, we still have a happy, prosperous life as we enjoy today here in the region. And we need to do this with a bit uh, of a sense of urgency, uh, to be honest with you, because if I look at how much investments are being made in the US in this area, and in China specifically, uh, we need to stay ahead of the, of the game. And if we don't, I'm very worried about uh, a scenario. My son is currently 11. I hope one day he's going to be a tech entrepreneur himself. Uh, but there is also a scenario possible that he will be standing in the Phillips Museum with a baseball cap with a windmill uh, turning on his head in old-fashioned Dutch clothing, including wooden shoes, to entertain the Chinese tourists who come here to discover how innovation once started in a region where it is now today completely gone. That scenario we should avoid, not only for my kid, but for all the kids in the region. I think we can, so I'm optimistic, but I'm also realistic in terms of the urgency. We need to continue to innovate and create new fast-growing companies to fuel the economy of the future and make the whole region sustainably robust for the future. The startup Inkooling is also one of the high-tech Excel deep tech startups. Their technology can make quite a difference when we talk about sustainability. At Inkooling, we are developing phase change cooling systems. If you ask what is phase change, it's a natural occurrence that you can find in the environment. So a great example would be uh, water turning to ice, for example. Uh, in electronic cooling, we have liquid, uh, a refrigerant, and we're turning that liquid into gas and back to liquid state, and that way we can cool our electronics. And what are the benefits? Uh, there are many great benefits. Uh, one of them would be the change of phase itself is very energy efficient, meaning we can really harness that power into creating really energy efficient systems. And second benefit is that with phase change, we can overclock our CPUs, meaning we can create some of the fastest servers in the world. Your slogan is cooling down the planet one server at a time. What would your innovation mean for the world? So uh, I think it's important to give a little bit of a backstory here. So in the past uh, few years, we've relied on compute more than ever, whether it's joining meetings online, uh, whether it's making uh, vaccines or even predicting climate events, everything is compute. And if you look at the data center industry in itself, at the moment, it's on par with CO2 emissions with aviation and shipping industry combined. So at Inkooling, with our innovation, we're focusing on two things, which is technology and sustainability, hence cooling down the planet one server at a time. Uh, by creating more energy efficient systems, we are improving the energy efficiency within the data center industry. And with focusing on the technology, we can accelerate these innovations in other fields that are currently limited by hardware. How is your startup doing? How do people react? 
Um, I think we're doing quite well, actually. Um, people are definitely taking our cause more seriously. Uh, I think people have realised the importance of data centres. If around two years ago, two and a half years ago when we started, we had to educate what is a data centre and why is it important, then now people just, they just know it and they are actually reaching out to us for, uh, for more information on this topic. And this awareness, has, has, has it brought you anything as a startup? Uh, yeah, so it's obviously COVID has not been easy on, on anybody. Uh, also being in a startup is very difficult, but I think the industry we're in has helped us to, again, bro bring awareness and that has resulted in partnerships and customers reaching out. Uh, a good example is, for example, SPI. Uh, SPI is a multinational system installer. They service data centers and they are looking at partnering with innovative companies that can bring a difference in the world. And uh, that has helped us to, to come in touch with these companies in the first place. What do you think of the sustainability approach of the campus and, and how can uh, companies like Inkwilling contribute? So I think it's quite interesting because it focuses on many different aspects, so uh, like the Vitality Hub, uh, fitness and food and, and having biodiversity on the campus, it, it's very nice for as an employee to be here, as a person to be here. Uh, but on the company side, there's a very diverse ecosystem with many companies here that help us to grow. I think without this ecosystem, we wouldn't be where we are today. Um, looking at how we can work together, what InCooling can help, uh, I think a good example is the AI Hub uh, or the Vitality Hub, where you, you need performance and, and we're quite good at that. So I think at the campus you have innovations and innovations takes time, there's a lot of simulations involved and, and that's something that I think most engineers will agree is a time consuming thing. So we can help accelerate that, meaning we can accelerate the innovation in itself as well. Why is it important to uh, make this ambition together with, with companies like Incoling? Yeah, so we need a, a wide variety of, of partners here. So we see our customers as partners and also our suppliers as partners. And we have uh, a lot of challenges with sustainability, of course. And if you talk about AI and the, the rise of data centers, uh, we also have a responsibility here on the campus and we really want to take this responsibility. Uh, and actually, we have great assets to address these and to, uh, uh, to tackle these challenges. Uh, with innovations like Inkooling. I think the main important thing is that we work together and then we can have the biggest impact uh, out of everything. Why is innovation so important for the high tech campus in becoming the most sustainable campus of Europe? Innovation has been always very important for the campus. I think the success of this uh, campus is built on the foundation of open innovation. And moving forward to becoming the most sustainable campus, I think open innovation, collaboration is the only way forward. So we really want to collaborate with all our partners uh, in this ecosystem to make this um, ambition a reality actually in by 2025. Um, so we are, I'm really looking forward to collaborate with all these smart people, all these smart companies uh, in driving through this, uh, to this uh, ambition of becoming the most sustainable campus. We need to do it together. Absolutely, that's the only way forward. Will you join us in creating the most sustainable campus of Europe? Visit hightechcampus.com slash sustainable campus.